and hearing stories that would make your hair stand on end. I have this rational fear of becoming an ice sculpture falling from the sky. Of the types of icing most often encountered, rime is about 71%, clear is 21%, and induction icing is the most common at 52%. 12% of all weather-related fatal accidents are associated with icing. Icing poses many different dangers to the aircraft. Lift decreases, weight and drag increase, the stall speed increases, and the whole aircraft becomes unstable in flight. These facts give me pause, so I decided to get 48 pounds of TKS de-icing equipment installed at Lincoln Park Aviation at November 07. Fully wetted, the useful load decreases by 105 pounds, knowing that aluminum and zero degrees Celsius in moist air are not friends. Frank, the owner, and his team immediately started on the job. He gave me weekly updates that I appreciated. The tips were removed. The leading edges of the wings and the tail was stripped and holes drilled in for fitting the laser drilled titanium weeping leading edges. The vortex generators were also replaced with pre-made bonded titanium. The interior was removed and the tubing laid out to reach the leading edges for delivering the de-icing fluid. After the fitting of the trimmed titanium edges, which took a week, they were bonded to the aircraft and then sealed. That was done concurrently with all other installations. Vortex generator, or as I call it, the credit card fuel receipt table for signature were replaced with the pre-made bonded titanium edged ones. They were then trimmed and riveted into place. The proportioning units that deliver the deicing fluid were installed with the conduits in the left wing and the interior of the rear fuselage. The tank placement is in the right wing, which was prepped, and the tubing placed for connection to the tank. The tank is still missing in action due to the manufacturing uh, issues and delays at uh, CAV. So the whole installation is, at the present time, non-functional pending its availability. The ice light was inserted in the tight turbocharged engine compartment by Bob, the master mechanic with expertise of a few hundred aircrafts in this form of a retrofit. He's amazing in his precision and detail. He measures multiple times and cuts once for the exact placement. Experience definitely counts. It's like opening up the beer can. Yeah, it is. Piece of the wall here. 
The main pump, the windshield pump, the filter, and the sensors were placed in the designated right main gear wheel well as per the CAV installation guide. The tubing and wiring were attached, then following that the interior was put back together. A few of these images are from the CAV website. The windshield spray bar was installed meticulously by Bob and then riveted into place precisely. Definitely oversized. Finally, the titanium leading edges were sealed and it uh, took 48 hours for the sealing to be completed and the bonding uh, of the titanium shields to the aircraft. All the installed artifacts on the surfaces were painted to their original color.
About icing, it's important to know. It is better to not launch into known icing conditions knowingly. Better to have an out if caught in the cold trap. At altitude, deviation of 2,000 feet above or below might be the difference between no ice and ice. TKS is just one such measure of a way out. It is important to remember that most general aviation aircraft cannot handle moderate to severe icing or freezing rain-induced clear ice.